morning and welcome to our Sunday service. I'm Evelyn and we are glad that you are able to join us today. Some of us may have had a tiresome week, but we want to thank God, our loving Father, for making it possible for us to be here today. And it is by His grace, by His mercies, He has guided us, protected us, and provided us with this opportunity to worship Him today. I would like to take a moment to welcome our guest too, who has been visiting us here for the very first time this morning. Whether you are here to have a look or are searching for a place to worship, or whether you want to know more about Jesus, we are delighted to have you here and uh, we warmly welcome you. Enjoy the rest of the worship time with us and God bless you. Shall we take a moment of quietness and silence before our Lord of Lords and King of Kings as we prepare to worship Him this morning? Heavenly Father, we want to give you thanks and praise you that we may gather in this manner to praise and worship you. Help us to realize your presence with us today, Lord and that you are Emmanuel, God with us. As you are present with us, Lord, help us to be present with you too, to praise you and listen to you. May you take delight in our gathering and our worship service unto you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Shall we all arise, if you may, for the call to worship? Enter his courts with thanksgiving. And his courts with praise. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that, know the, Lord that the Lord is God. is God. Shall we all pray the opening prayer together? A God of heaven and earth, we praise your name, for you are most worthy of praise. Your name is great amongst the nations. Your deeds, O God, are from everlasting to everlasting, and your love endures forever. O God, we praise your holy name, because you alone are God, and we pray for your mercy today. We pray that in your great mercies, do open our eyes to see who you truly are. Amen. Our act of praise will be led by Victor Tan. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Sing 
Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us now wholeheartedly and in unison pray the prayer of illumination. Our Father in heaven, Jesus Christ, O Holy Spirit, we pray for your grace to open up the scriptures for us, Lord. Reveal yourself through your holy word we humbly ask of you. We long to know you, Lord, through the reading and the preaching of your word. Amen. The scripture today is taken from Matthew chapter 9, verses 9 to 13. Now, as Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the collector's booth. Follow me, he told, and Matthew got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors, sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our hymn of preparation 
led by Brother Victor Tan. Good morning. Good morning to all and all. Yes, as, uh, I want to agree with uh, our sister Evelyn just now. We just want to welcome each and every one of us here in our online service. And I also want to specifically welcome you, our guests, who, is, who are joining us uh, in this particular service. Yeah? because you were invited to join us. Welcome and welcome. Jesus loves you. And I sincerely hope this message finds you well. Let us now go to God in prayer before I go any further. Yeah. Let's go to pray, uh, God in prayer. Father in heaven, we just want to thank you for this glorious morning. Lord, we thank you for life itself. Lord, we thank you for the message you have in Jesus Christ. 
Lord, help us to look at you today as we worship you. Lord, help us to understand the message. Help me, Lord, to convey the message clearly, simply, Lord. Without compromising your grace and your truth. So, Lord, we commit this time of worship, this time of looking into your words, this time of adoring you into your hands. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Well, uh, once again, uh, we are very happy and glad uh, for all of us here, especially our guests, as mentioned, who are here with us today. And if you are here for the very first time, more welcome to you. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's start. Uh, this particular sentence, uh, I hope this message finds you well. Uh, it's quite popular uh, nowadays uh, in emails. Uh, or messages. I'm sure you have seen it. Um, and I believe, I believe people are very serious when they write it. Uh, your family, friends, and even colleagues who write to you may sincerely wish for you to be well in these unprecedented times. <clears throat> As the threat of COVID-19 is very real, and very so now in Malaysia. Uh, infection rates uh, is getting higher by the day. And many may question, like many times in the past, when something this big happens. And the question is, where is God? Where is God when 9-11 uh, happened? Where is God when the tsunami happens? Where is God when the Japan earthquake hit? Well, God is still here. The Bible says He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And God is still inviting us to follow Him, to return to Him, to know Him. Where is God when COVID-19 doesn't end? Yes, the, the, vaccine, the vaccine is coming. But the toll is now 94 million infections and about 2 million deaths. Although the death rate is still at 2%, still a small number considering the world's population of 7 billion people. But we must also take into consideration that uh, other causes of death do happen. Uh, for example, 47,000 die from cardiovascular diseases each day worldwide. That is a higher number than COVID, actually. Uh, but the biggest cause for death is a disease that you and I don't even think we have. And what is this disease? Uh, this disease is called sin. I, I shall go into it a little bit more. But borrowing from uh, Pastor Ronald's uh, sermon uh, two weeks back, uh, it was said that the infection rate of sin is 100%. And the death rate is also 100%. Is there a deadlier disease? Unless you have the vaccine. Now you see, physical death is not the end. Yes, unless you have the vaccine. That was what I wanted to say. Physical death is not the end, as mentioned. Uh, but William, brother William, uh, have you died before? I actually had someone ask me that, uh, that particular question when I shared the same information as what I've just said. Have you died before? The friend asked. Uh, no, I haven't, obviously. 
But I know and believe in one person who has died before and came back to tell us about it. And this is the only person with this audacious claim that he can beat death. He's none other than Jesus Christ. And the Bible says this in the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation in uh, chapter 20, verses 11 to 15, says this. Then I saw a great white throne, and him who was seated on it, the earth and the heavens fled from his presence, and there was no place for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done, as recorded in the books. The sea gave up the dead that were in it, and death and Hades gave up the dead that were in them. And each person was judged according to what they had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. Note that it's a second death. Have you heard of the second death? There's only one death that we know of, physical death. But here the Bible talks about the second death. What is this? Anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. Now this, is, this particular uh, passage here in Revelation speaks about Judgment Day. I am sure you have heard of Judgment Day. Uh, if you have watched films like Terminator and all that, uh, Judgment Day, right? Uh, but the film doesn't uh, depict what it is said in this Bible. Right? So Judgment Day is when God comes back to earth and judge the deeds. Uh, please excuse me, my dogs are barking. You see, God does not want any of us to perish in this manner. He doesn't want any of us to go there. The lake of fire here is hell. Now that is bad news. And to be in hell is eternal separation from God. But God is reaching out. God is reaching out, calling everyone back to himself. Now, he cannot force you and I to choose or acknowledge him. What he can do, however, is to send his son, Jesus Christ, to die for your sins, my sins, so that the way back to God is possible. And on top of that, he is going out to invite people to come back to him, to go out with this message of good news. Now that, my friend, is the good news. One such calling and invitation to follow Jesus Christ uh, was recorded for us in the Bible. And those verses were just read to us just now. We will now go into the details of this account. And see how, is go how, how God is going to speak to us uh, this morning using this particular passage. Yeah? So, verse 9. Uh, this is found in the book of Matthew. Uh, if you have your Bible, you can follow through. Uh, verse 9 says this. As Jesus went from there. Now, I will treat this particular verse in two parts. Right? Uh, first part is this particular sentence, as Jesus went on from there. Now, uh, went on from where? Well, if you read the preceding passages, you would find that Jesus was going around 
preaching about the kingdom of God and also healing the sick. He just healed a crippled man. You see, Jesus cared. And Jesus still cares. However, before Jesus healed the crippled man, he said something stunning. Jesus said to the crippled man, your sins are forgiven. Now imagine, you know, going to the doctor to get your sickness healed. And the doctor said this to you. You may go, doctor, I have cancer. And the doctor goes, your sins are forgiven. Now, how would you and the people who are with you react to the doctor's statement? Will you be offended? If you accept the statement, it would mean that you acknowledge that you have sinned and need the forgiveness. Have you come to Jesus to get your sickness healed? Are you looking for some healing? Now, uh, I believe that Jesus would like to heal any of us of our biggest uh, ailment first, right? And our biggest ailment is sin. Basically, the Jewish leaders who heard Jesus' pronouncements were aghast. Uh, it was recorded for us. They were perplexed, horrified, astounded, or appalled to say the least. Because the Pharisees would have thought to themselves, in fact, it was recorded for us, you know, who is this Jesus Christ? Pronouncing forgiveness of sins, only God can do that. Only God can do that. Now, do you believe that Jesus can forgive sins? Do you believe that Jesus can forgive your sins and my sins? Jesus still cares, as was recorded for us in the preceding passages of uh, Matthew chapter 9. Jesus still cares today. And he wants to heal us from our sins. Let's go to the second part of verse 9. Second part of verse 9. Now, uh, the thought here is that if you believe, you would respond. If you believe, you would respond. Now, he saw a man Verse 9 continues, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, Jesus told Matthew. Eh? He told him, and Matthew got up and followed him. Verse 9 describes uh, Jesus' invitation. Now you see, this Matthew, a tax collector, was the same Matthew the author of this particular book that we are reading. So Matthew is actually writing his autobiography, you know, uh, is actually telling of his own conversion. Matthew is giving his own testimony. And what a testimony it is. You know, we have been taught uh, to share our testimony with others in this way. You know, uh, first of all, uh, tell of your life before you met Jesus, then how you met Jesus, and what you did after meeting Jesus. Now, this is exactly what Matthew recorded for us. Before I met Jesus, is as if Matthew was saying, I was a tax collector. Now, how did I meet Jesus? Well, Jesus came to me. He invited me to follow him. And what happened after I met Jesus? I got up and followed him. Less than a minute kind of testimony. Matthew said Jesus came, saw Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Now meaning what? 
Jesus finding Matthew in his position, his sinful position, seated at the tax collector's booth. Sinful? Why sinful? Well, we have just learned from last week that uh, in the last sermon, that if you're not here, uh, it's okay. It doesn't matter. You see, tax collectors in the old days in, in the Jewish society uh, are well-known sinners. Why so? Because they, they were actually collecting not for their own government, but for the Romans. And not only that, they were also collecting more than what they should. They were working for the Romans. And on top of that, uh, they were well known as sort of like a betrayers of their own people. So they were well known so-called sinners uh, in the eyes of the Jewish people. Now, just so you just imagine, you know, when Jesus invited Matthew, the tax collector, to follow him to be his disciple, Jesus was already going around teaching about the Jewish faith, about God, about holiness, and stuff like that. And then suddenly he invites this well known sinner, Matthew, to be his disciple. Now, it, it was a big deal. The other disciples and Pharisees who were following Jesus would have just said, hey, wait a minute. You're inviting Matthew, the sinner, to come with us? But yet, Jesus still invited Matthew. Now, today, it's still the same. Jesus is still inviting sinners to come follow him. Now, but the point is this. What would our responses be? Would it be as what Matthew has done? A sinner? Would you leave your current position of sin to follow Jesus and to be his disciple? Well, Matthew left the tax collector's booth. Just imagine, you know, standing up in the middle of your work hour and walked out. That must, be, and that must have been a sight huh? to behold. Would you also get up from your current position to follow Jesus, just as Matthew did? Or do you think that is just too much? Or are we going to say, maybe later, when I have completed my task, when, I, uh, when the COVID-19 is over, when I complete my checklist of travels, or maybe when I sin less, then only will I come. Or my heart is not ready yet. Now, did Matthew do, do that? Matthew knew that he had a problem. Although he had all the money and security that his fellow Jews may not have because he was collecting more. You must remember they were quite rich yeah, comparatively yeah, to the other Jews. Matthew would have also known that he was despised by his own people for being a tax collector. Now, have you felt like that before? knowing that uh, materially you are okay, but somewhat guilty in the inside for what you have done to stay in your position of power and wealth? Maybe, maybe not. You may be secured like Matthew in this world, but you just cannot get rid of this guilt you are feeling inside. I, be I believe that was what Matthew felt. Now, with a little hope and acceptance by this radical street preacher, Jesus Christ, Matthew was willing to risk it all. Maybe this Jesus can help me, Matthew would have thought. There is something about this 
Jesus, Matthew responded to Jesus' invitation. Matthew got up and Matthew followed Jesus Christ. Well, the, the good news is this. Jesus was able to get rid of that guilt Matthew had. And Jesus is inviting, the same Jesus is inviting us, you and I, to follow him today. Now, are you willing to get up and follow Jesus as Matthew did? Do you believe that Jesus can invite a sinner like you and I to follow him? If you believe, respond like Matthew did. Get up and follow Jesus Christ. If you believe, you would respond. Something for us to ponder on. Let us go on to verse 3. Now, uh, verse 3, the thought here is this. Now, you will tell others after meeting and following Jesus. Uh, you can't stay uh, indifferent. Okay? So, uh, verse 10, uh, verse 10 uh, goes like this. This is the third point, actually, uh, not verse 3. Third point, uh, verse 10. Now, while Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. So what did Matthew do after meeting Jesus? Matthew threw a house party. Uh, it is said that many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. Ate with who? Ate with Jesus Christ. Now, how did all these people, tax collectors and sinners, know about this house party? Matthew is the one uh, who invited them. No one just crashes a house party, you know? especially a sinner's party. Uh, the majority of the Jewish people are you know, followers of the Jewish faith, um, whether they are very pious or not. But the, the tax collectors were well known and the tax collectors and sinners kept to themselves. Most probably kept out of the Jewish synagogue also. Now, one or two people may come to your house, but when many are present, you would have to have this invitation. So basically, Matthew invited them. Now, when you meet Jesus, you would want to tell others about it. That is exactly what happened to Matthew. How about us? How many house parties have we thrown uh, for uh, the believers eh? uh, to go tell people about Jesus Christ. Now, well, the MCO uh, would allow us some time to plan. Right, uh, Dadoki? <laughs> Sister Joan? Yeah. Now, how about us who have just met Jesus today? Now, if you've decided to follow Jesus today, you can also invite others to this particular gospel service that we have here in Penang Wesley in the, in the days to come. Now, we are having this uh, gospel service uh, at the end of every month, uh, the last Sunday of the month. But this particular Sunday uh, is, was chosen because uh, at the end of this month, we have some other activities planned. So, one cannot keep quiet about Jesus Christ after encountering Him, after being invited by Him, after following Him. And everyone is welcome. Yes, even sinners. Or should I say, especially sinners. Now, of course, sinners like Matthew who met Jesus was transformed. He did not stay a sinner, obviously, as he followed Jesus. Matthew's life changed for all eternity. Your life will change for the better after meeting and following Jesus. 
You must remember that Matthew did not just meet Jesus. Matthew followed Jesus as well. So some, something for us to uh, ponder upon, another point to ponder upon, is this. You will tell others after meeting and following Jesus. All right. Thought number four. There are five thoughts altogether coming from this particular uh, five, verses. five verses. So the, so the, the verse the 11 verse says 11. this. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? When the Pharisees saw this, they asked the disciples, who are the Pharisees? The Pharisees are the Jewish uh, teachers of the law, right? The, the, re the religion, uh, the Jewish religion, Judaism, right? The Pharisees, uh, it's a name uh, given to, to the teachers of this uh, particular religion, uh, the laws. Excuse me. So when the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? You see, we have to be reminded uh, that you and I are sinners, saved by grace. We need to be gracious Christians. This point is for Christians, uh, believers, uh, because like the Pharisees, they were believers, but they were misinterpreting the law. And they were not so gracious to the sinners, as we can see in this verse. The self-righteous Pharisees were accusing Jesus. Now they were trying to say, hey, Jesus is, is fake news. Nah? He, he said one thing and then he practiced another. He, he, he was uh, a good teacher nevertheless, but why is he doing this? Now, how is it possible for Jesus, uh, the teacher who claimed to know God's ways and laws, to be amongst the sinners? Now, the Pharisees have grossly misunderstood the application of the Judaic laws. The Pharisees taught that by keeping all the commands of the law for the sake of keeping them and isolating themselves from sinners, make them righteous. Make them better than others. Make them unique as they were the chosen people. And to the Pharisees, that was what their thought, their reasoning of how God functioned. The reasoning of the Pharisees in this area to keep themselves away from being with those who are, are known as sinners is taught to be a holy act. Okay? And uh, that, uh, they thought, gave them righteousness. While the Pharisees did keep the law, they did not realize nor acknowledge that they had also sinned in many other areas. This is very true for us today too, isn't it? Especially for us, the leaders of the church, the pastors and long-time Christians who may have learned to overcome sins over over time, with the understanding of the Bible and with the help from the Holy Spirit. It is not from our own strength, but have forgotten that we too were wretched sinners at one time and most probably still sin from time to time. And we may have become ungracious with new believers or even the non-believers around us. The pride of the Pharisees had made them self-righteous. Now it is good to be reminded that we Christians too can become like that if we are not careful. So this thought for us believers, be reminded you and I are sinners saved by grace. Be gracious. From this particular verse, let us move on. 
to the fifth point. The thought here is, a sinner needs Jesus Christ. And the verse here is this. The verse 12 says this. On hearing this, Jesus said, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. Verse 13, But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners. Now, unless you are like the Pharisees, who thought they were doing okay, washing their hands, keeping their distance, eating kosher, healthy food, clean food, holy food. Unless you are like them, sarcastically, then you would need Jesus. The Pharisees had many, uh, may, have, may have considered themselves clean, spiritually healthy and holy. Because the Pharisees had religiously followed the Jewish laws. What about us? Now I sense a bit of sarcasm in Jesus' remarks here in verse 12 and 13. And if I may paraphrase, it is like Jesus saying, you, you know, you, you think, of course, huh, towards the Pharisees, you know, if you think you are holy, then you don't need me, Pharisees. And the Pharisees were presumably smart people, people with a lot of knowledge. So the Pharisees would have caught what Jesus was trying to convey. And today, even though we may not be as knowledgeable as the Pharisees, I hope we catch the meaning too. Are you sure you have no sin? and do not need Jesus? Then Jesus gave the Pharisees an assignment in verse 13. Jesus said, go and learn. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. Now you see, again, I sense another sarcasm here. It says, you know, Jesus was, it's like Jesus saying, you know, you think you know your Bible very well, Pharisees? Because he was quoting from the Old Testament. Uh, that was the Jewish uh, religious teacher's Bible. Uh, at that time, there wasn't any New Testament, right? The Old Bible, right? And because Jesus was quoting from the book, the Old Book of Hosea, chapter 6, verse 6. Hosea, chapter 6, verse 6 says this. Uh, for I desire mercy, not sacrifice, and acknowledgement of God rather than burnt offerings. Now, in context, Hosea was a prophet. He was calling the Israelites back to God, turned back to God. And then uh, in, the, in that time, you know, um, the Israelites were, were very good re religiously. Obviously, they were, they were doing a lot of sacrifice when they come to uh, worship God. It is like coming to church today, coming with a lot of offerings, a lot of sacrifice, putting in a lot of money. But yet, you know, there's, there's no mercy. There's no mercy. And obviously, on top of that, there were a lot of sin. And that actually profaned their worship. So this was the context and point that uh, Jesus tried to tell the Pharisees in Matthew's day. As Israelite, uh, as Isra as an Israelite or Israel had become like an adulterer in Hosea's days, like an hot oven. If you read the rest of Hosea, right, going after another and forsaking God. So their worship was. And it was a profane worship at that time. And this was, a, it was quite an insult to the Pharisees. Um, yeah, so it was recorded for us. So the cry was, even in those verses, return to God. God desires mercy 
and he asked his people to have mercy upon people, on other people. God doesn't need their sacrifices. God doesn't need our sacrifices. He just wants to see our acknowledgement of our dire need for Him. All that you are giving to God, all that I am giving to God, all that sacrifice in the ministry work, while they are all good, it will never make you and I righteous. Now, when you admit you need Jesus Christ, you admit that you have sinned. When you don't admit you need Jesus Christ, you are saying, like the Pharisees, you are okay, healthy, holy. You are going to get through. Sin is the real pandemic here. It has always been. A sick person needs a doctor. A sinner needs Jesus Christ. So here's the summary of today's message. It's a very short one. Jesus, in verse 9, cares. Jesus cares. The summary of today's of message has five points in it. Jesus cares from verse uh, first part of the verse 9. Jesus preached the good news and was healing people. But what he cared most was to forgive people's sins. So Jesus cared not only for your physical well-being, he did that, but more so for the sins to be forgiven so that we can return to Him, so that on Judgment Day, we will not be thrown into the lake of fire and experience the second death. He cares. And point number two for us to ponder upon, also in verse 9, now if you believe, you would respond. Matthew believed. Matthew believed. When uh, Jesus saw Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth, Jesus invited him by saying, follow me. Matthew got up quite immediately and followed Jesus and followed Jesus. So it's very simple. If you believe, you would respond. Matthew believed. Matthew responded. And then verse 10, you will tell others after meeting and following Jesus, not just meeting. A lot of people may have met Jesus Christ. A lot of people may have said, you know, oh, so and so. Or maybe, you know, they said that some of my friends, actually, when I uh, share with them, they would say, oh, my uncle is a pastor. Okay. Um, and I've been to this particular church. It's okay. No problem. But uh, have we met Jesus personally? And have we followed Jesus personally? And then if you have done that, if you have met Jesus personally and have followed him, you would tell others. So Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house. Many tax collectors and sinners came. He told others to come. Because that was the good news. When you have a good news of Jesus Christ, you would want to share with others. You would want to share with others. Point number four, be reminded, you and I are a sinner, saved by grace. Be gracious, Christian. When the Pharisees saw this in verse 11, they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? They were accusing Jesus. I hope we can see this point clearly. It is a very simple point. We are sinners. Be reminded again that we have been saved by grace. Be gracious to others. And finally, this is the point for our sermon today. 
A sinner needs Jesus Christ. A sinner needs Jesus Christ. Matthew, in verse 12, on hearing this, uh, oh, sorry, Jesus hearing the Pharisees' comment, eh? Jesus said this, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. That summarizes today's message. I hope this message finds you well. I hope this message finds you well. Now, if this message does not find you well, then I suggest you see the doctor. I suggest you see Jesus Christ. Now, how would you know that you are well or not well? Well, I mean, it's, it's kind of um, uh, cheesy, but you know, uh, we know the symptoms of COVID-19 pretty well. Right? But what, uh, what are the symptoms of sin? What are the symptoms of the sin sickness? Now, some of the more common symptoms of sin sickness would be this. Uh, Self-sufficiency, where we don't need anything or anyone. That means that there's also no acknowledgement of God. We don't need God either. No acknowledgement of the one who gave us our breath and our very life. Another symptom will be selfish tendencies, uh, thinking of the good for ourselves only. That is very self-explanatory. Another symptom, do not struggle with sin anymore. There's no struggle with doing what is wrong in the sight of God. No more guilt anymore. The conscience is seared as the Bible says. Now, if you have one or more of such symptoms, then obviously you are infected. Go and see the doctor. He is still there. He is still inviting us like he had invited Matthew a long time ago. That was 2,000 years ago. And he is still here. And he is here present in, this, in the church, in his church, still going out to invite others to follow him. So the message is this. Is, I, hope the, I hope this message finds you well. Yes, uh, there's no, uh, <laughs> there's, no uh, there's no typo there, basically. And you know, uh, be safe. How to be safe? Now you have to, first of all, get to, um, get to the vaccine. If we are COVID, uh, well, if we, are, if we want to be uh, immune of COVID, then we have to get to the vaccine. But having the vaccine near you will not help, you know. Now, even if you work in the vaccine factory, it doesn't help. The effectiveness of the vaccine is when you take it in. It is the same with Jesus Christ. And you can sit all day in a church building and not acknowledge God and follow Him. Nothing will happen. You can listen to 10,000 gospel sermons on giving your life and following Jesus and have intentions to follow Him. Nothing actually happens until you do it. So basically, how to be saved, it is very simple. Believe in Jesus Christ. Follow Him. To be saved is to uh, believe in Jesus Christ. To stay saved is to follow Him. Follow Him till the end. So there's no typo here. Be saved, stay saved. Uh, just a play of words here. I hope, again, this message finds you well. God bless. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we just want to thank you for this time. 
Lord, we want to thank you for your invitation once again. Father in heaven, we know that uh, the truth sometimes offend. But Lord, we know you meant well. And you mean well. Lord, may your message rings clearly today. May your love rings clearly today. May your love be felt through this message, through your invitation found in the book of Matthew to Matthew himself 2,000 years ago. Be felt, Lord, once again. And Lord, may you give the grace to all of us to respond to you, to be saved by you, and to stay saved by you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. God bless. Brothers and sisters, let us continue to come before the Lord to pray to Him. Father God, we give you thanks for this day, for the opportunity to come before you, to worship you, for the opportunity to sit at your feet, to listen to your word. Lord, we thank you for reminding us that as your children, we shouldn't be self-righteous. Rather than we should acknowledge that we were sinners and it is because of your grace we are able to come to you and be saved. So Lord, may your grace continue to work in our hearts to make us become more gracious so that as we reach out to the non-believers, Lord, we will reach out to them in a manner, in a gracious manner, in a kind manner. And that, Lord, your love will be overflows from our life. Lord, sometimes we try to uh, use our so-called pious life to defend ourselves. We, we tend to think that as long as we read enough Bible, we pray enough, then we are considered as righteous. So, Lord, may you remove all this self-righteousness in us. Help us to depend on you daily for the forgiveness of sin, for the strengthening to live a holy life to glorify your name. Lord, may your message once again touch our hearts and transform us. Lord, at this time, we want to remember the friends who are being invited to our Gospel Sunday, those who have heard the message, that Lord, you will touch their hearts and you will enable them to know Jesus Christ for who he is. And Lord, we also want to remember the elderly one, the homebounds who are in our community of faith. During this time of pandemic, they are not able to go out. They are not able to uh, interact with others. And Lord, this pandemic also hinder many of us from visiting them. So Lord, we pray for your grace and mercy to be upon them. In loneliness, Lord, may they find your presence being with them. In their sorrow, Lord, may they find comfort in you. Lord, we pray that you will help them not to give up on you, for you never give up nor you let them go. Lord, continue to hold them dear in your arms. Continue to embrace them with your presence. Lord, we pray that you will grant them the desire to seek your face, O Lord, that in seeking your face, they may find you. In seeking your presence, they may know that, Lord, you are always there with them and for them. Lord, we also pray that you will grant us wisdom, the leaders and the members of the church, to reach out to these people, O oh God. Not only grant us wisdom, but also the willingness, either through phone calls or whatever means, so that these elderly people, these homebound, will be taken care of by our care, O oh Lord. Lord, remember them, O oh Lord. Lord, we also want to commit to you the COVID situation in our country. Lord, because of this pandemic, Lord, many people have lost their job. Many businesses have collapsed. So, Lord, we pray that you have mercy in our country. 
even as we have just started implementing MCO lockdown, Lord, we pray that this lockdown will be effective in curbing the spread of the virus. Lord, we also want to pray that the people will follow the SOP diligently and that they will be patient, vigilant, and responsible as a nation in uh, following, obeying the SOP, Lord, so that uh, the curb of the spread of the virus, Lord, will be effective. Lord, we also want to remember the frontliners, those who are working in uh, hospitals, clinics, that Lord, you will indeed strengthen them. Lord, may you grant them resilience in this uh, troubled time. May you protect them from tiredness, fatigue, infection, and discouragement as they need to face the COVID patient. Lord, we want to pray that you will continue to uh, strengthen our faith in you even in this time of pandemic, that we will not lose hope. Help us to walk with you day by day. Help us to be disciplined in reading your word, in seeking your face through prayer, that our relationship with you will become more intimate and closer. Lord, we thank you for this time of prayer. Thank you for listening to all the concerns in our heart. We give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, brothers and sisters, now I would like to invite us to arise to recite this uh, affirmation of faith in MH740. The modern affirmation is a summary of what we as Christians believe. So now let us do this together. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, that is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare, sing together. We believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all his works, and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord to the end that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen. Let us glorify together by singing this song. Brothers and sisters, let us continue to worship the Lord by bringing Him the decision of our giving to Him. Before we do so, let us pray the offertory prayer together. Dear God, thank you for your gift of salvation found in Jesus Christ. We can never thank you enough, Lord. May our offering today be a token of our appreciation for the mercies and grace we have received from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now I would like to offer us a moment of silence for us to bring our decision of giving to the Lord and his ministry for this week. Let us pause for a moment. Now let us sing the doxology together. Praise God.
Welcome once again to our English worship service of Westy Methodist Church, Penang. And once again, I would like to wish a warm welcome to those who are joining us for the first time in our worship service this morning. I trust that you have a good worship experience with us this morning and that you will join us again for our Sunday morning worship service at 9 a.m. every Sunday. And the Zoom link is the same, the ID is the same. Next, I'd like to announce that our membership and baptism class will start next Saturday on uh, 30th January at 2.30 p.m. It is uh, through using Zoom platform. The facilitators are Reverend Ronald Yap and, pa and Pastor Liu Ng. If you want more information, please contact Pastor Liu and a reminder that the deadline for registration is 29 January 2021. And last but not least, I want to thank all our uh, worship enablers this morning. Uh, thank you, William, for sharing of the word. And for Evelyn, uh, the worship leader, for Dato Ki, the scripture reader, and Victor, the song leader. And not forgetting the IT team who work very hard behind the scene to make sure that our Zoom worship services go on smoothly every Sunday. Stay safe, stay well, and continue to pray for one another. Thank you. Brothers and sisters, now let us arise to sing the closing song, Amazing Grace.
Let us pray. May the Holy Spirit of the Lord convict our heart so that we can run to Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sin, for salvation, and to be saved. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us from now until eternity. Amen. Brothers and sisters, here ends our service this morning. Now I would like to invite us to turn on our video cam and our mic so that we can have a time of sharing of peace as well as fellowship. At this time, I also want to specially again welcome those who are here for the first time, those who are being invited to our Gospel Sunday. So uh, I would like to encourage you to turn on your video so that we can know you and yeah, get to know you. Yeah. So that Hi. is Hi. 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 Morning. Hello. 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 Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. 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 Hello，Hello，Hello，Hello，Hello，Hello，Hello，Hello，Hello，Hello，Hello，Hello，Hello，Hello，Hello，Hello，Hello，Hello，Hello，Hello，Hello，Hello，Hello，Hello，Hello，
Yeah, yeah thanks, William. Thanks, thanks a lot, thanks, William. Thanks, William. Yes, Hi, William. Hi, William. Hi, William. Hi, William. Hi, William. Hi, 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 Mabel, see you tomorrow. Mabel. Look at the little girl. Yeah, so sweet. Yeah, see you tomorrow. Who's Ben's daughter? Make the maid's daughter there. Who's Ben's daughter? I don't want to cry there. Oh, Mabel's get of course it is. Ah, oh, Estelle, it's Estelle. Estelle. Yeah, Estelle. Estelle. Hi, Estelle. Estelle. Oh, that's so cute. Hello, Miss Lucas. Oh, wow. Okay, Estelle. Yeah, yeah. Soon. Yeah, I like this Zoom is because all the names are there and everybody can get to know who is yeah. who. <laughs> yeah. And you can also see who are, uh, most of them are wearing Sunday best. <laughs> I'm, I'm in the forest. I am no. in the forest. <laughs> I am so vain. It matches with my bill. It's true. Without my white hair, I'll be lost in the forest. <laughs> So we are waiting. Uh, we are waiting for your house party and Dr. Okay, Pi and John. Yeah, yeah, I'm just, I'm just waiting to do that. COVID nineteen is terrible. Oh. You look scared. Eh? Yeah. You know Chinese New Year. Uh, you can't mm. even go out Chinese New Year. You know. Yeah, I understand. Mm. I understand. Can't go. So, what shall we do? Ah. Uh? Zoom party. Okay, la, it's okay. Okay, Zoom party. Zoom party. Plan, plan, okay, continue to plan. Party. Yeah, we we invite people to Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> Zoom party not complete without a uh, grab delivery. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was about to say. <laughs> well, we have done many things on Zoom, including birthday parties on Zoom. <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah. Do not eat only lunch. Ah, this skinny oh. cock. I was wondering Hi. who is skinny cock. So gorgeous, like you. <laughs> I just love to find my Zoom. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, oh, no, 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 Actually, where's your wife? Where's your wife? Where's your wife? Come on. My wife had to uh, travel down to KL. Uh, she's uh, sending my son back to college and will be down oh. for, uh, for a couple of weeks. Now. So it's a bit difficult for her to join me. <laughs> yeah, we hey, what is your friend doing? <laughs> yeah, I'm laughing. Hey, why is uh, this having this uh, no, James, having this James Bond glasses? Uh, uh, what, uh, happened? Uh, Ding, what happened to your eyes? Must be his wife, lah. Hey, you know what? Doctor uh, uh, is having cabin fever. <laughs> You're having cabin fever. Oh, now he's on a motorboat. Yeah. A mustache. Look at that. A mustache. I am. So beard. So beard. So beard. Yeah. 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 See you soon. So, Pastor Ronald, with your wife away, have you got food? Ah, have you got oh. food or not? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no problem. I, my daughter is uh, is with me, and we both both of us taking turns to cook, so not a problem. Ah, oh, good. Uh, your teenage daughter can cook. Yeah. Have to la. Cannot. Pastor, your daughter take turns to cook. Oh. <laughs> 
But one thing good lah, the supermarket is just next door. Yeah, you can get, exactly. You can get yeah. Essentials, huh? Yep. But you know, don't be surprised if you get uh, certain love gifts, you know. Sam, <laughs> how long will Kim be away? <laughs> uh, about one, two weeks. Uh. Wow. Uh, Hear that, everybody? Don't I know, know what to do. It's okay. You know what to do. <laughs> uh, I'm supposed to eat like a cow. Only eat grass and uh, vegetables. Uh, healthy oh, you're food, talking, healthy food. You're, you're telling a carnivorous person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are all carnivorous. But the, uh, but you can take fish, can you? Can you take fish? Yeah. No, but yeah. please, it's okay. Oh, don't worry about us. We are yeah, okay. okay. full of food and uh, and we quite mm. we quite like to cook our own food as well. Is it? Yeah. So so uh, th- your daughter is not is not herbivorous, isn't it? Herbivorous. Uh, you know, teenagers at this age they ah. go through this time when they want to uh, jaga badan and all that. So, <laughs> so she's jaga also badan down on on. on uh, jaga badan means send you laksa lo. <laughs> laksa is fish base yeah. and laksa also can slim the waist. <laughs> right. Low right. Huh? Okay, let's All right. Go. Okay. Bye. So bye bye everyone. Take bye. care. Bye. God bless. Bye. 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 Bye.